All right, so I'm here with uh, Billy. He is a U.S. Uh, veteran and a, con and a PMC, private military contractor, who's worked all over the world, uh, including Central America, Africa, the Middle East. He's fought in Afghanistan. And recently, during the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022, he joined the Volunteer Force, the Ukrainian for Foreign Legion. And uh, he has some stories to share with the world about his experiences and uh, Billy, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and your words? Cool. Uh, so I was a 68 Whiskey, a uh, combat medic in the Army for a couple of years. After I, get, after I got out, which has been kind of contracted around the world since, uh, worked for a couple of big companies, a couple of small companies, just regular contracts and shit, nothing too big. So, yeah. Okay. And when did you get into Ukraine? And uh, so I got into Ukraine two or three weeks before the war happened. I kind of saw the writing on the wall. I was like, all right, cool, I want to get there. Uh, me being a medic, I wanted to like, teach civilians and the military, combat lifesavers, TCCC, all that kind of stuff in order to like, help get prepared so that way they could survive longer. Um, I met up with a couple of different dudes. We were teaching them like uh, individual movements, battlefield tactics, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, troop movements, other stuff like that, how to handle a, white, a rifle, how to uh, acquire sites, all that other kind of stuff, just basic, basic shit in order to try and keep them alive longer. Mm -hmm. And you came in with six, seven years of military experience? Uh, yeah, it's seven years now. So. Okay. And when you joined the foreign Ukrainian Foreign Legion, what was that process like? Uh, basically, I showed up, they handed me a rifle, and I got lucky as shit. I got a uh, full, uh, what's it called? A full combat load of six mags. Uh, most of the other people that I hear about now, they're lucky if they get one mag in 10 rounds. Wow. So uh, I got lucky as shit, but that's also because I showed up early, uh, probably before the supply and everything went down. Uh, the rifle they gave me was absolutely garbage. <laughs> Within two mags, I had a mortar my rifle four times, and there's a bunch of other stoppages and shit that happened during it. All my buddies, like, fucking no rifles zeroed either, which is... I'm going on a tangent right now. But, it's okay. And to confirm, yeah. to confirm with our audience, uh, a mortar is a is a jam, right? A what? Um, a mortar in the rifle. Mortar, yeah. So a mortar when you mortar your rifle, is basically uh, the shell casing gets stuck inside the chamber of the rifle, and you can't undo it yourself just like uh, with your own hands and everything. So you got to slam the butt of the rifle into the ground with the charging handle in your hand. So that way you slam it. You mortaring the rifle into the ground in order to get the cement casing out. Got it. So, and that happens. So that's obviously very unreliable, and yeah. a lot of soldiers died. A lot of Ukrainian and uh, foreign soldiers died because of this. Uh, there's a fucking bunch of different reasons why Ukrainians and foreign soldiers have died. Man, um, unreliable tech is just the bottom of the barrel problems about why people died. I mean, like having unreliable rifle sucks, but you're still able to fight through it have an unreliable comms to the point to where your own dudes are shooting at you and stuff like that because you don't have any communication, that's way more dangerous. Okay. So. And you had a lot of frustration while fighting with the Ukrainians. Even though you love the Ukrainian people, you want to help them out, but you were frustrated uh, with your experience. Why don't you share some of the uh, stories and uh, some of the things that you found most frustrating about fighting in Ukraine? Uh, what I found the most frustrating, Jesus, that thing is fucking annoying. Uh, what I found the most frustrating is the amount of lies. Uh, from the time that I got in Ukraine until the time that I left Ukraine, all I had been to was lied by my commanders, you fucking quote unquote commanders, because none of them have any actual fucking experience. And uh, the fucking government, I only got ever lied to by those guys. The only people that I could actually trust were my fucking people to my left and the right. Your battle buddies. My battle buddies, basically, yeah. From the Foreign Legion. Yeah. Um, and even then, you can't even trust all of them because you don't know who the fuck a Russian separatist is and shit. One of our guys, uh, what's called, I guess, from what I understand now, was that the uh, latest bombing that hit the International Legion barracks uh, over by Lviv, he sent the coordinates of that fucking base. And he also sent the coordinates of one of the bases that we were staying in. So he was a Russian separatist or a spy, whatever the fuck you want to call him. And he sent the coordinates for those bases in order for them to get fucking smacked. Wow. Um, also, the fucking 30, 35 people, that's completely bullshit about what have died. I've fucking seen with my own eyes now that there's well over 100 people that died over there. Ukrainians aren't marking them as fucking deaths. They're either marking them as, um, sorry, they're not counting Western deaths as actual deaths. They're either counting them as Ukrainian losses or as desertions. They're not counting the actual body count. 
of foreign fighters. Yeah, they're not. Okay, so it's, foreign fighters, when they die, uh, the media doesn't report it. No, no, the Ukrainian government doesn't report it. The media doesn't report it. They're either marked down as desertions or as Ukrainian losses. I see. And when Ukrainians, um, and, and you mentioned something to me that Ukrainian casualties were much higher than reported. Russian casualties are much lower than reported. All right, so they're saying what those, uh, you told me yesterday, 11,000 11, Russian. 11,000 Russian dead, 1.5 thousand Ukrainians dead. Complete bullshit. Complete Cut, bullshit. Yeah, complete bullshit. Cut the fucking Russian numbers down in half at least. Okay, at least. Because all it is, it's all fucking flair. It's all trying to like make people like more nationalistic and everything. It's the same thing that every military does though, man. Mm -hmm. Like the fucking uh, Americans do it. I know that we kill like fucking uh, one Taliban or some shit like that. All of a sudden it comes back. Oh, hey, we killed uh, 10 Taliban. It's just how it works. Okay. So usually I like to cut that number in fucking half just for the sake of it. Uh, and then the Ukrainian losses of 1,500. Dude, no. I've, I've seen at least fucking a couple hundred people myself get fucking schwacked by now. Uh, just from the local IDF, the fucking uh, air support and everything else, just the amount of fucking casualties that I've seen with my own eyes tell me that it's complete bullshit, that there's only 1,500 Ukrainians dead. So. And, and you say um, Ukrainian tactics aren't the best, their commanders aren't. No, 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 too. no. So with the uh, Foreign Legion, what they had us doing is they had us being uh, shock troopers, basically. Uh, they would send us on these fucking suicide runs. Uh, you don't get any intel. You don't get any op orders. You don't get told, like, even, like, just the modicum, like, the tiniest little bit of fucking intel about the area. Like, oh, hey, there's Russians in this city. We want you and 14 other dudes in order to go into the city and kill the Russians. Next thing you know, you're fucking balls deep in 200 Russian soldiers that have fucking heavy armor, air support, and artillery. And you're trying to get the fuck out of there. Half your team's fucking dead or fucking uh, they ran. So now you're stuck out there. We had a, a couple of buddies, not my team. They got stuck out in ho uh, hostile territory for four fucking days because their own dudes left them there. Like, wow. So they were leaving men behind, which is yeah, very they, counter to what um, uh, what Western soldiers are. No, they're, they're fucking leaving people behind all the goddamn place, all over the fucking place. Your body will never be recovered if you die. Wow. I've literally watched fucking dudes' bodies getting eaten by crows and by dogs out there. The Russians are really bad about it, too. They just don't give a fuck about their dead. But the Ukrainians in the same way. They will not recover your body. And let's talk about some of the incompetence by um, the Ukrainian commanders who were frustrated. Yesterday, uh, your battle buddy, um, oh. your battle buddy Aaron, was telling us a story about how he was training a platoon of, uh, of recruits, and a, um, and a soldier came in and almost shot him. And then when he was, uh, when your buddy Aaron was telling him to do push-ups, ran away. Yeah. And then that guy is in platoon command. Yes, yes, yes. So that happened when we were training uh, one of the local, uh, the Territorial Defense Forces. And uh, basically, I wasn't there. I was teaching a uh, combat lifesavers class at the time. But from what everything he was telling me is that this dude, uh, so before you train, we always check mags, make sure all the mags are empty, check chambers, make sure all the chambers are empty and stuff like that, just so that way we can be as safe as physically possible. This dude comes running up after we've done all that stuff, runs to the front of the line, racks around, pops one off, and then fucking runs off like a little bitch afterwards. Like, that's... That's, <laughs> that's the commander. <laughs> and that was the commander of one of their fucking forces. Wow. And uh, I guess he's all supposed to be, like, a lawyer or some shit like that, too. So it's supposed to be, like, this smart individual who knows what the fuck they're doing. And those are the type of people that we're dealing with every fucking day over here in Ukraine. People that are in positions that they don't need or deserve to fucking be in. Wow. And that happens in fucking all over the fucking place, too, in all kinds of militaries. People just getting into positions that they don't deserve to be in. But it's really bad here in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And would you say the Ukrainians are very um, authoritarian? They, they, they say they still do believe what we do what we say or or else. Uh, yeah, it's a very Soviet mentality. Um, I got lucky as shit. Uh, I left a couple of days before the rest of my buddies. And they tried leaving and they had all of their own personal military gear stolen from them by the Ukrainians because they don't want to fight anymore. They don't want to go on fucking suicide missions and stuff like that on the no man's land where, you know, half your team gets fucking blown to hell by indirect fire before you even know it gets the mission objective. And uh, it fucking it, it's it's just fucked up, man. I got no other way to say it. It's the entire situation is just fucked up from beginning to end. Ukrainians don't give a shit about you. The Ukrainian government and the military, they're going to use you like fucking cannon fodder. 
Yes. Uh, and when you say cannon fodder, that means uh, they're gonna throw suicide. You, yeah, suicide missions, man. They're going to throw you into the meat grinder. They don't give a shit if you come back or not. If, if, if fucking, it's funny as hell because they give you the shittiest fucking weapons that they possibly can. And then if you make it back alive, they give you better weapons. It's like fucking Call of Duty. Wow. Yeah, so basically they're throwing you to the fucking wolves during like your first mission or two. Where if you make it back alive, you prove that you know what the fuck you're doing and everything. No, nah, it's complete fucking horseshit, man. They give you shit equipment. They give you shit fucking body armor that doesn't stop rounds half the fucking time. They give you shit weapons that are fucking absolutely horrible. They don't give you the uh, fucking any kind of comms communication or anything. Hell, we had two buddies that had uh, brought their own fucking radios. And the Ukrainian soft dudes fucking took their radios. Soft, meaning? Uh, special operations. They took their radios. Wow. Just like give it, hand it over. It wasn't by choice. They had them at gunpoint. What? Yeah. So well, it's the same thing that soldiers happened. Soldiers were pointing guns at foreign soldiers. Oh, I like your yeah. gear. Give no, no, no. Me. That's the exact same thing that happened over uh, from the, my other buddies left. There was like forty people all left around the same time. The Ukrainian guys had my buddies and all those other forty fucking people that were leaving at gunpoint. Took their weapons from them, took the ammunition from them, and then went through all of their own personal gear, stole everything that they fucking wanted, and then kicked them out. That is, yeah. That that sounds. Doesn't sound pleasant. And no, it, it's fucking complete bullshit. Do you, do you think they would actually shoot if... Would they actually shoot? 100 fucking percent. I mean, they're Ukrainian. Sorry, that sounded bad. But just the mentality that they have, especially right now, it's win at any cost. If that means shooting one of your fucking... Uh, somebody in the back because they're running away, quote unquote running away, then yeah, that means what it means. Wow. Now let's talk about some of the uh, atrocities you've seen. Um, now Russians, obviously, uh, yeah, let's talk about some of the Russian atrocities you've seen. Russian atrocities? Fuck, dude. You mean besides just fucking killing civilians? Do you think it's intentional? Oh, 100% it's intentional. You don't bomb fucking civilian targets and then say, oh no, my fucking bad. Like what's it called? I know that I'm looking at it and a lot of the Ukrainians are fucking retards and they put these like artillery battal- uh, batteries and other stuff like that right next to schools, right next to hotels and other stuff like that. And that causes the Russians to hit those fucking targets. Okay, cool. I understand that. But the fucking civilians that are getting shot to death, just fucking trying to get away or trying to protest and everything, they're getting shot to death, the Ukrainian civilians? Like, no, that's fucking completely intentional. Using the, MR, uh, the MLRS system, the fucking uh, thermal, uh, th- thermal bombs and everything on civilian targets where there's no military fucking targets around, yeah, that's fucking intentional. You don't do that shit on accident. Just fucking accidentally hit a button and say, oh, whoops, there goes 50 fucking people. Like, there's atrocities on both fucking sides, man. It's fucking... And Russian soldiers, when they don't do what they're told, they're being chained up and left to... Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've actually found people... I guess they've fucking found people. Uh, I haven't seen it. The fucking... My buddy saw it. Uh, Aaron that you talked to. Uh, a couple of the other buddies have saw it and everything. They fucking... Russian troops that don't want to fight or something like that, they're chaining them up and then leaving them there to die, basically. They give them fucking, you yeah, freeze to death. Wow. And they give them like a weapon and everything so that way they're still able to fire if they need to or something like that. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. And this uh, entire thing is just like, you know, you gotta laugh at this kind of shit because some of it's just so fucking crazy. The amount of stupidity that's on both sides is just unheard of. The amount of bullshit and lies that are being spewed from both sides is just absolutely horrible you know fucking in any war that you go into you're going to get a lot of misinformation both sides are going to be lying about what's actually happening and everything but this is the worst case of all that that i've ever seen Mm -hmm. just blatant just blatant right to my fucking face lies by my quote unquote commanders that have no fucking experience like dudes that were literally a fucking lawyer or a fucking politician's son or something like that. And they're, uh, they're put into commander's positions because of people they know. It's the old Soviet mentality, man. And it's fucking asinine. It's what's getting okay. people killed. So it's no merit- meritocracy. No, no. It's not none whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I see. And I mean, despite that, despite everything you told me, the Russians are still having a very hard time, which to me is a silver lining. Let's talk about the the quality of the Russian infantry. Oh, the quality of the Ruff- Russian infantry is absolutely garbage. You give me fucking 14 dudes, I'll take out a platoon of them. That's just how garbage they are. How big is a platoon? Uh, it's anywhere between like 40 to 50 people usually. So, they're, 14 they're, people. Yeah, so give me 14. Dude, 15 give me, Westerners. yeah. Give me 14 good fucking gunfighters. Like, not even fucking good gunfighters, just like regular infantry dudes, U.S. military dudes. They'll fucking take out a platoon of 40 Russians 
in just a regular gunfight. These fucking Russians are absolutely trash. They can't hit the broadside of a fucking barn. They don't know how to move, shoot, or communicate together. They're scared shitless, too. Most of them are, like, fucking 20 years old, and they've only ever fired a gun once in training or some shit like that. It's it's pretty fucking sad, actually. It's like shooting Damn. in a mato- – uh, what the hell is that? Um, it's like a fucking carnival game almost. Ducks in a barrel. Yeah, ducks in a barrel. That's what it is, man. They're just like – they still do the fucking stupid-ass charges where they go in a line like a towards the infantry, trenches. Like yeah, a, like an <laughs> infantry charge, basically, man. They like don't fix – World War I, They don't fix, fix – no, they don't fix bayonets or nothing, man. But it's just like they still do that fucking line charge and everything. So you're sitting there – dude, we killed like – what's it called? We had about 200 Russians charge the fucking line this one time, just regular infantry. We killed like – we killed like 30 of them. Yeah, about 30, 35 of them or something like that. Russians didn't give a shit. They retreated, fucking came back like another hour or two later after they fucking recon- like, you know, got back together. That's just how they are, man. They don't give a shit. So um, the, Russian, the Russians treat their soldiers pretty brutally. Oh, fucking brutal as shit, man. So they still got that Soviet mentality to where win at any cost. Like I said so before, Ukraine's got the same idea. And basically, the Russian troops, from what I understand, are taught, like, you're expected to lose at least half your fucking teams. You're expected to lose that much. And how big is a Russian team? Oh, I don't fucking know. I know that they're, uh, what's it called? Shit, their main element, the battalion, stuff like that, have a thousand people, give or take a couple. They have uh, sniper crews, tank crews, uh, fucking regular infantry platoons. I don't know all the exact fucking Russian doctrine and everything like that, but... Yeah, it's all, I'm basing it all off my fucking own experience in the U.S. military and shit, so. U.S. military is always limit casualty, everybody matters, and Russians just like, I'll oh. booby trap my wounded friend. Yeah, so like we've had, uh, what's called, I've seen this with my own eyes actually, um, dudes booby trapping their dead, so that way when you go over there and you try and take mags off them or something like that, you flip them over, the fucking grenade pops off, fucking dudes losing hands, arms, other shit like that. Uh, even their own wounded, they fucking uh, booby trap their own wounded. So if you, you go over there and try and help out their wounded, you flip them over and you move or anything like that, grenade fucking pin pops, you get taken out too. That's just barbaric. Yeah, it's fucking evil, but whatever. Yeah. And this is a warning to other foreign legions is not to pick up Russian rounds. Yeah, so don't, if you see some fucking Russian dude that's dead or dying kind of thing, just fucking pop him again, get it over with. It is fucking... Fuck them. The Russians are fucking stupid as shit anyways, man. The only way they're going to learn is if you kill them all. Oh, I meant the Russian magazines. Oh, yeah. Don't take their fucking ammo, bro. Okay. Yeah, just... Use their booby traps. Yeah, don't fucking... Don't fuck with the dead. As fucking... I've always been taught in the U.S. fucking military and contract and shit. Don't fuck with shit you don't know. It's that simple. There's been stories of uh, soldiers, Ukrainian or foreign soldiers picking up Russian ammo and then shooting it and then the ammo blows up in their face. Yeah, I guess they got a, uh, what's it called? They're putting a comp B from grenades or something like that. I don't know that full fucking thing. My buddy knows more about all that kind of shit than I do. But, yeah, man, the fucking amount of booby traps because these Russians love to booby trap fucking everything. Wow, just like the Taliban, huh? Dude, it's fucking everywhere, man. They love to booby trap shit. Yeah. Fucking their own dead, their own injured, fucking houses that they've abandoned. Everything. Jesus. Yeah, man. They fucking, they booby trap everything. And let's talk about the elite Russian soldiers, uh, the Chechnyans. Oh, the Chechnyans? They're all bitches. They're all bitches. <laughs> oh, damn. I don't give a fuck, man. What are they going to do? They're going to skin me alive like they did the other motherfuckers? They skin people alive. Yeah, man. There was like uh, one Canadian dude and two American dudes they caught alive. Fucking retards for getting caught alive. Sorry, that's just how I feel. They should have fucking killed themselves. Um, wow. I mean, I'm not going to get taken alive. Fuck that shit. I made that myself that promise a long time ago. Um, so, yeah, I guess these guys got fucking skinned alive by the Chechnyans. Um, who lost it? Who recently lost their commander? Yeah, they lost a commander during the first day, I think. I don't remember. Um, I don't know. They died like everybody else. The Chechnyans are stupid as shit. So they, they fucking suicide charges and everything else, too, man. They died just like everybody else. Okay. Are there Chechens fighting for us? Yeah, I guess we got some down south, uh, down in Mariupol. We got like a Chechen uh, uh, battalion or something like that fighting for the Ukrainians. So, okay, yeah, that's what I've heard. I haven't seen it myself, though. I've mostly been in fucking Kiev and everything, so I haven't been that far south. Okay. Um, any, any hopes you see? Hopes? Yeah, fucking ceasefire as soon as possible. 
the amount of fucking dead and wounded and this shit is just stupid. There's no reason for this many fucking people to be dying. The amount of civilian casualties, the humanitarian crisis, there's no reason for any of this shit. The best thing that can happen right now is a fucking ceasefire. But I don't think Ukraine's ever going to go to Russia's demands because Russia is fucking asking for all kinds of weird shit. And Ukraine being Ukraine, they don't want to give in. I don't blame them. It's their fucking land, you know. But at the same time, though, do what's best for your fucking people. Yeah. I don't know. Ukrainian people are suffering. Yeah. I'm not a fucking uh, politician or an expert and all that shit, so maybe I'm missing the point. But whatever. And speaking about politics, this is you have you fought in the Middle East. Yeah. And there's a lot of people, netizens online, saying oh, the West shouldn't help Ukraine or they're hypocrites for helping Ukraine or supporting Ukraine because what we did in Iraq uh, or Afghanistan. Do you see a difference between what Americans did in Iraq and Afghanistan versus what Russia's doing in Ukraine, which is the propaganda the Russians are saying, hey, you, you guys attacked Iraq. We're doing the same thing. Don't be hypocrites. No, so it is a little bit hypocritical. I mean, fucking unjust wars are unjust. That's just the bottom line of it. I don't believe that we should have ever invaded uh, Iraq or Afghanistan, but that's where we were. You know, I don't believe that Russia should ever fucking invaded Ukraine, but that's where they are. The war is a useless fucking thing. The reason why I'm still fucking uh, getting money off of it is because it's what I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm doing the right thing, helping people. Okay. So I'm not here to fucking be a war fighter. I'm not here to uh, fucking kill the bad guy or anything like that. I just want to fucking help as many people as possible. It's part of the reason why I'm a medic. So you're finding good in a bad situation. Trying to. Yes. And um, would you say there's any? Uh, would you say there's any differences um, between the way Americans treated the Middle Easterns we were fighting versus the way Russians are treating Ukrainians? I mean, Americans tortured the shit out of some of those. Uh fucking Taliban, the Middle Eastern, and everything like that. Russia is literally skinning people alive. I don't think that America skinned people alive. So, you know, there's that difference. But the treatment that we're treating others, um, at least near the end, we weren't fucking murdering civilians all the damn time. You know, unless you count that final fucking strike in Afghan form even. Oh, God, that shit still makes me cringe. Yeah. I guess the, uh, what was he? He was an aid worker and he killed like seven kids or some shit like oh, that. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, that one was fucked up. Fucking... Let's go, Brandon. Um, <laughs> uh, what's it called? Now, there's a lot of fucking similarities, man. There's, hypocr uh, there's hypocrisy all over the fucking place when it comes to war. Every side thinks that they're doing the right fucking thing, but in reality, it's a useless fucking thing. Like, I wish that there were better and easier ways in order to get somebody's fucking point across instead of having to kill your neighbor, but whatever. Got it. Um now, is there anything else you want to say to the world about your experiences, what you feel, how we can treat each other better as humans? Yeah, man, treat each other like you want to be fucking treated. I mean, it's always been the golden rule. Um, this whole war in Ukraine is just fucking retarded, man. There's no point for Russia to fucking be there from my point of view. And uh, I don't know, Ukraine needs to fucking understand that you can't just be throwing people in the fucking meat grinder. That's not how the world actually fucking works. There's better, easier, and smarter ways in order to be using fucking troops. Because let's be honest, man, us Western troops, a lot of us actually have combat experience. We've been trained for fucking years and years and years in order to go on these types of ops and everything. And they're still using us as a fucking meat grinder. You know, it doesn't make any sense to me that you got these assets that actually know what the fuck they're doing. And you're sending us into a fucking meat grinder just consistently with no fucking intel, no op planning, nothing. And you expect us to be fucking uh, like some kind of special forces dudes doing like all this other kind of cool shit. And they you think still you're go, Rambo. Yeah, they think we're Rambo. That's just not how it works. We're all still fucking human, man. Yeah. It's called uh, a couple of days ago. I think it was earlier this week or last week. Uh, a couple of fucking dudes and Navy SEALs went out on a fucking recce op or some shit like that. Three of them fucking ended up dead. The last dude crawled back into the trench on his stomach, shot the shit. Uh, we're talking about uh, Navy SEALs. Okay, guys that have been doing this for fucking years, and they fucking ended up dead. What do you think a couple of dipshits like me with the guns are going to be doing? Wow. So they're just completely wasting our, the talent. Yeah, they're wasting fucking resources, man. The Ukrainians don't give a shit. 
Like, uh, oh yeah, that reminds me. A lot of the fucking supplies that they say is coming over from the West, I haven't seen any of it. Wow. I haven't seen anything. I have not seen a single fucking night vision. I haven't seen thermals. I haven't seen fucking any kind of new uh, body armor, nothing. The rifles that we were given are fucking like from the 1980s. 1980s. Yeah, so yeah. So I got given a uh, what is it the the FNC? Yeah. So I got given a 5.56 FNC from the 1980s, and that was the fucking shittiest fucking gun I've ever used. Jesus fucking Christ. Wow. And you've been sent on ops with not enough like night ops with no night vision. I mean, all right. So there was dudes getting in contact with fucking Russians at like five meters because you can't see them. You can see them. I mean, you can't see them. You can hear them and you can smell them, but you can't fucking see them. So it's basically a wild melee at that point. Yeah, basically, man. Like, we're talking bayonet fucking distance. How close they're getting to motherfuckers before we have to fucking drop them. Wow, and you've been very close to an enemy, physically. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Billy, uh, I really uh, I want to thank you for from the bottom of my heart for your service, your courage, your sacrifice. And um, the world needs more heroes like you. I just wish uh, you weren't, your skills weren't, were put into better use. And Fucking, yeah. Yeah. All righty. Thank you again. All right.